As you all know that we started a series on respiratory disease. We will provide you the basic information about these topics. So today our topic is on pneumothorax which is a common medical emergency. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sanjay Kriketa from Medimind. We hope you all are safe. Before starting our today's topic, if you haven't watched our previous video on pneumonia, please watch that video and don't forget to subscribe our channel Medimind. The lungs are surrounded by two membranes, also called pleura. The outer pleura is attached to the chest wall, which is known as the parietal pleura. And the inner one which is attached to the lung is known as the visceral pleura. Between these two pleura, there is a thin fluid filled space, which is called pleural cavity. So what is pneumothorax? Pneumothorax is the collection of the air in the pleural cavity that leads to partial or complete lung collapse. When the amount of the air between parietal and visceral pleura increases, there is an increase in the tension of pleural cavity which will slowly lead to the lung collapse. Pneumothorax can be classified as either traumatic or spontaneous. Traumatic pneumothorax can be further classified into open pneumothorax and closed pneumothorax. Spontaneous pneumothorax can be further classified into primary pneumothorax and secondary pneumothorax. Now let's go into the details about each type of pneumothorax. First one is traumatic pneumothorax. Traumatic pneumothorax may result from any type of penetrating injury such as stab wound, gunshot wound or injury from an impaled object. Blunt trauma from a car accident or fall from a height or a crossing chest injury may also cause traumatic pneumothorax. Some other cause of traumatic pneumothorax are insertion of the central line, thoracic surgery, thoracosynthesis and tracheotomy. As I have mentioned earlier that traumatic pneumothorax is further classified into open and closed pneumothorax. So how does this open and closed pneumothorax occurs? Open pneumothorax results when atmospheric air which is also a positive pressure flows directly into the pleural cavity which is a negative pressure. As the air pressure in the pleural cavity becomes positive the lungs will start to collapse on the affected side. This collapse of the lung will lead to the decrease in the total lung capacity. Total lung capacity is the volume of the air in lung after maximum inspiration. Now the person will develop ventilation and perfusion imbalance which will lead to the hypoxia. Now about closed pneumothorax. Closed pneumothorax occurs when the air enters the pleural cavity from within the lung. This causes the increase in the pleural pressure and prevent the lung expansion during inspiration. For example, when the blunt chest trauma causes the lung tissue to rupture, it will result in the air leakage, which is the main cause for the closed pneumothorax. Spontaneous pneumothorax is almost similar to the closed type of pneumothorax. This condition more commonly occurs in men and in older patients with chronic pulmonary disease. But sometimes it may occur in a healthy young adults. The main cause of spontaneous pneumothorax is rupture of subpleural blade which is present at the surface of the lung. Now due to this rupture, there is a air leakage into the pleural space. Now the lung collapses, causing decrease in the total lung capacity, vital capacity and lung compliance which will finally lead to the hypoxia. Another important type of pneumothorax is tension pneumothorax. In tension pneumothorax, air accumulates within the pleural cavity, which causes the rise in the intrapleural pressure, resulting in the lung collapse. On inspiration, meristinum shifts towards the unaffected lung, impairing the ventilation, and on expiration, meristinum shift causes the compression of inferior vena cava and reduces the venous return. By the way, if you are wondering what is meristinum, Medistinum is the space between two lungs inside the chest cavity. What symptoms will you look for in the patient of pneumothorax? Although causes of traumatic and spontaneous pneumothorax vary greatly, the effects are similar. The cardinal sign and symptoms of pneumothorax includes shortened sharp chest pain which is increased by chest movement, breathing and coughing, shortness of breathing, cyanosis, respiratory distress, and hyper resonance hard with percussion. 
Now, what are the signs and symptoms of open pneumothorax? The signs and symptoms of open pneumothorax include absence of breath sound on affected side, chest rigidity on affected side, and tachycardia. Tachycardia means heart rate over 100 beats per minute. Tension pneumothorax produces most severe respiratory symptoms like decreasing cardiac output, hypotension which means blood pressure less than 90 by 60 millimeter mercury, tachycardia, tachypnea which means abnormal fast breathing and some signs like medicinal shift and tracheal division to opposite side and there may be some cases of cardiac arrest. So how will you diagnose a case of pneumothorax? Chest X-ray is the most important and confirmatory investigation for the diagnosis of pneumothorax. Chest X-ray reveals air in the pleural space and may show shift in the mediastinum. Let's talk about the treatment of pneumothorax. Treatment of pneumothorax depends on its type. First one is treatment of spontaneous pneumothorax. Treatment is usually conservative that is careful monitoring for spontaneous pneumothorax when there is no sign of increased pleural pressure, lung collapse is less than 30% and no dyspnea. But if more than 30% of lung collapses, thoracostomy tube is inserted in second intercostal space in mid clavicular line to re-expand the lung. Then this tube is connected to underwater seal drainage. Another one is treatment of traumatic pneumothorax. Traumatic pneumothorax requires thoracostomy tube insertion and chest drainage and sometimes it may also require surgical repair. And the last one is treatment of tension pneumothorax. Tension pneumothorax is a medical emergency so it should be handled very carefully. In this case a large bore needle is inserted into second intercostal space through mid clavicular line followed by thoracostomy tube insertion. So that's all for today guys. I have tried my level best to explain the pneumothorax in my own way. Hope you all like this video. Our next video will be on bronchial asthma. If you want to get notified about our upcoming video, please don't forget to subscribe our channel Medimind. So till then, goodbye, take care and stay safe.